Welcome back, Twitter. It's a dumpster fire. Today, imposter accounts for everything from Tesla to George W. Bush to a fake Eli Lilly tweet claiming insulin was now free, all with that vaunted blue check mark because they paid eight bucks for it, not because they were the real deal. Elon Musk today said he might force a site into bankruptcy, and many top executives, including those in charge of safety and security, have resigned in recent days. Let's bring in my guest tonight. He is Young Voices contributor James Stradowski. He's back up late with me tonight, live here on the Final Five, to talk about it. James, what the hell is happening with Twitter? Yeah, that's a great question, Jim. Uh, Elon Musk bought Twitter not that long ago, and it feels like once again we're back on the roller coaster ride. Uh, so he bought it, he fired the CEO, he fired the head of trust and safety in the Vijaya, and now he's trying to make his mark. He believes in democratizing the blue check, if you will. Mm -hmm. But you know, things are built for a reason, Jim. That blue check was there uh, to provide uh, authentication for people who are trusted, uh, who are community leaders, significant people public figures and, and and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. unfortunately, when you when you just democratize it like that, it creates this uh, uncanny thing, you know, where people decide to impersonate you, including Elon Musk himself. Uh, Kathy Griffin found that out the hard way uh, when she decided to change her name to Elon Musk and start making fun of him. And then she got her account suspended. Why? Because it was not a parody uh, account by definition in his views. So now he's starting to make the rules known on his platform. You know, as I look at all of everything that's going on, and I'm still scrolling because, you know, anything, it's moved at a breakneck speed today. Um, there were people impersonating Tesla's official accounts as well and posting some pretty pretty damning things on there to the point where Elon Musk had said, and if I have it right in front of me here, I just want to read the tweet. Going forward, accounts engaged in parody must include parody in their name, not just in bio. That'll stop them right there. Oh, absolutely, Jim. And if not, that's what the ban hammer's for, right? Uh, unfortunately, people can just keep recreating accounts, uh, you know, much to his, you know, uh, disgrace. He does not want to go and deal with having fake accounts or anonymous accounts or bots. And that's likely what's going to happen. Just because you ban one doesn't mean that you're going to stop others from emerging. So uh, it's going to be a continuing problem for Elon that he'll just have to deal with. I want to talk about really the more serious side of this all, because this has become as you mentioned, you know, it, it, it's a crucial tool for a lot of people. It's something I've met. Uh, I've made uh, a lot of contacts for work on there. I've made friends off Twitter through the years. In fact, I know one, one of them, my buddy Guy's watching in, in Virginia tonight from Pittsburgh, just messaged me and said he was watching the show. But, but all of that aside, when you look at the, the, the underpinnings of Twitter right now, should we be worried, those of us who use it, should we, we, should we be worried about our data? Are there genuine concerns there that should, that should worry us? Yeah, I think that's a fair question. And when we heard the, the rumors that top executives like the VP of sales and uh, the head of trust and safety that was promoted after Vijaya was fired uh, were going to be resigning from their respective positions, it certainly is cause for concern. That's why you did hear uh, the FTC go and announce that they were going to be monitoring things a little closer mm -hmm. uh, because let's not forget uh, something that Elon Musk is going to find out the hard way if he is not careful that Twitter does have consent orders from the FTC, and if they violate those orders, they are subject to some massive fines. So this is a situation that he has to monitor very carefully, and he needs to go and act fast to go and, and right the ship, if you will. You know, um, I'm curious, as we look at where it goes from here, there have been a lot of people wondering, is there... Because, you know, it's not like we, we had Twitter that came along. It wasn't like we had MySpace, we had Friendster, then MySpace, then Facebook. It doesn't look like there is anything that matches the real-time interaction that, that Twitter affords us. Is there anything out there ready to step in that, that might get some disaffected users away, or is it all just uh, up to chance at this point? Yeah, that's a great question, Jim. And the reality is, is that I think that if you are uh, more technologically savvy, uh, the one that we've seen a lot of people flocking to in recent days is a, is a federated uh, type of, of uh, social media called a Mastodon server. Um, so people have been going and jumping over to that platform and messing around with that. One of my friends, uh, Mike Masnick, is, is certainly a big proponent of liking that as somebody who has come onto the Final Five and talked about wanting to encourage people to multi-home. That's certainly something that I encourage people to continue 
continue to do mm -hmm. because it just helps you get a better uh, ecosystem of just being familiar with options out there. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, if you're not like technologically savvy, no, Twitter's pretty much like one of your bigger spots right now, which is why I think it is uh, you know something where that Elon has to go and, and work to fix this because otherwise his company, to your point at the outset, is facing some serious financial troubles and we might not have something like that emerge for some time. I, I just think it is the dumbest. Abs I can understand, you know, many of the concerns that people had about free speech. Uh, but, you know, the fact that Elon Musk, just imagine if Jack Dorsey had come out like Elon Musk did on Monday and said you should go vote. You know, Elon Musk said you should vote Republican. It's his right. It's his company to do that. But just imagine the absolute freak out had Jack Dorsey done the same. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's a mess right now. And I think we're all kind of watching this uh, cautiously. Those of us who rely upon it, we're going to see how it shakes out. James Stranowski, always appreciate you joining me. Good to see you, my friend. Thanks for having me, Jim. My pleasure. And I was checking to, I was just checking to see if anything was happening with Twitter while I was talking to you. It's still up. That's the good news. And the good news is we're going to be back after this.